Hey there, this is Steve Horseman with Good Guys to Great Men. Thanks for watching today. I came down to the barn this morning to feed the horses, and it's May 21st, I think, and I'm in a coat and a sweater, and I'm looking at two feet of snow. Welcome to northern Colorado in May. <clears throat> Next weekend, we'll have flowers and green grass. I came down here to feed the horses, and I, I also decided I wanted to shoot the video down here because I'm comfortable down here. The topic I want to talk about is not comfortable. The topic I want to talk about is, is very uncomfortable. It's the idea that your wife might be cheating on you, or your girlfriend might be lying to you, or deceiving you, or talking to somebody else. I want to talk about this because this comes up a lot. I'm not sure where this video is going to go. I know that I feel passionate about what I want to say because every time I talk to a guy about this, he says, what am I going to do? What should I do? I don't know what to do next. What do I say? And what I want to tell you in this video is that there is nothing you can do or say that is more, more important than what you're thinking right now. It's your stinking thinking that has gotten you to this place of feeling this knot in your gut, this helplessness and hopelessness and despair that you just have to figure this out and make her like you again or, or find out if she's cheating on you. This is all about how you think about this. And the first thing I want to talk about is how you should be thinking about what she's thinking because that's what's keeping you awake, right? What is she thinking? What's going on with her? And I could tell you she doesn't even know what's going on with her. She doesn't know about uh, why the feelings in her are, feel so anxious and desperate and depressed and scared and also uh, turned off from you and why she isn't happy with you and why she isn't happy in general. She doesn't know exactly why she's attracted to the idea of talking to other people and flirting with other people. But here's the truth about her. She's just like you. She wants to feel warm and wonderful and adored and appreciated and loved and significant. She wants to feel that rush, that tingly feeling of, of sensual connection and admiration from another person. Of course, she wants that from you or wanted it from you at one point, and she's not feeling it right now in her body, which is what she trusts the most. Her body is telling her, I'm not comfortable here, so I'm going to go over here. It may be text messaging, it may be Facebook likes, it may be conversations with guys at work, it may be even the thoughts and fantasies of having sex with another man. So big deal. You've done the same thing. Don't lie to me. I know you have done the same thing. That's how you should be thinking about what she's thinking. She's just a human being. She is just like you. And as much as you're wondering about the deceit and the betrayal that you might be experiencing right now, you have to realize that what's going on in her mind and body is no different than what goes on in your mind and body. I'm not telling you to condone anything. I'm telling you to empathize and understand at this very moment that all those feelings of anger you might have in wanting to confront her, you need to understand what's going on in her body is not an outward conscious attempt to emasculate you or make you feel bad. She is responding to the emotions in her body the best way she knows how. Now you have a, a reaction going on in your body. What's going on inside your body? You have this feeling of, of indignance, of deservingness, and that you, you deserve more from her. Or you've worked so hard, right? You, you, you've built this business, you've, be, you've gone to med school, or you're a lawyer, or now you're a jumbo jet pilot, or you're an electrician, and you, you've just busted your ass for her and the family. You've done everything you can to prove your worthiness, and now you feel unworthy. And she's created this feeling inside you. Um, that's what's going on in you. And I want, I want to turn those thoughts around because you have this feeling of being slighted, that somebody owed you something, that somebody owed you the feeling of certainty and security inside your body. And now it's being threatened and it's her fault. And now you need to fix it. Those are the wrong thoughts. I want you to think about jealousy. Let's talk about jealousy. Where does jealousy come from? At its core, jealousy is an insecurity. It's a, it's a feeling of a lack of control that you have, that you had some right or some, um, some expectation through your relationship agreement, whether it's marriage or whatever, that she owed you a feeling of certainty about the future, that she owed you some type of ownership and control over her thoughts about her body. You know, she, she's got the two breasts and the one vagina on this planet that you're allowed to look at and touch and have sex with. And so jealousy comes from thinking you've had some level of ownership or control over that. And she's taken them away from you and has decided to let another person have attention on those things. That's how men think, right? We think about the sex, the sexuality of it and, and how we wanted to connect with her and she's not allowing us. And now she might be doing it with somebody else. Jealousy comes from the insecurity of the expectation that we ever had ownership over her mind and body and what she does with those things. Marriage was not meant to give you certainty. Marriage was not meant to remove all doubt that you would be loved forever by this one woman. Marriage is supposed to be a place where we learn how to screw up and learn how to love. And this is part of it. This very day, if you're feeling cheated on, this is a time for you to get into your manly mojo and say, this is a time for me to learn more about me not to fix her or figure her out or analyze her, waking up at four in the morning trying to figure out what she's doing right now, what she's thinking. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is think about the truth about you. 
I'm going to slow down here just a little bit because I'm getting amped up because I care about you. <laughs> and I can feel in my body how I felt when I was in this position. I didn't understand the value of me. As much as I had accomplished in my life, the, the definition of my, of my worthiness was coming through her opinion, her ability to love me, her ability to give me her body and her trust and her mind and make me feel like I was on top of the world and I had certainty in my life. No matter what I accomplished outside the relationship, I was projecting my worthiness on what she was doing and thinking. And this is the mistake that you might be making now too. So how do you get out of this? How do you get through this? The, the courage and confidence you need needs to be a different train of thought about understanding that the day you were born, you were a worthy man. The day you were born, you needed no more certainty or assurance from anybody outside yourself that you were a worthy man that you deserve happiness and you deserve connection and laughter and sensuality and sexuality. And that this one person at this day and time who seems to be distancing herself from you and removing her attention from you is not the measure of your well-being. I want you to know the truth. I want you to know that the absolute truth about who you are, that it doesn't mean anything about you if she is going through this time in her life. Is it possible you've screwed up? Is it possible that you've done some things that have put her in this position? What if she said, I would have never done this if you didn't make me do this? Is there an element of truth to that? No, she made her own choice. That's the black and white truth. She made a choice if she's talking to somebody else or having sex with somebody else. That's her choice. Is there some truth that you could have been a different kind of man that might not have created this environment? Sure, sure. We, we screw up all the time. We do things that push women away and insult them and make them feel insecure and unloved. And they can move away from that. And they do the same for us. This is the part that I'm talking about. Marriage and relationship is a place where we learn how to love. We take these times and go, wow, I need to learn from this. I need to become more curious, interested, and amused instead of desperate and angry and hopeless. That's the truth about you. You have the confidence. You have the value. Whatever she's doing and thinking doesn't define you. So what do you do next? I know you want something to do. I'm telling you how to be and how to think. So one thing you can do is very unconventional. I'm talking about radical honesty absolute transparency here. This is a liberating feeling when a man decides that I'm just going to say what I'm thinking. I'm going to say out loud what I'm feeling, and I don't care about the consequences. You always fear the consequences of speaking your truth, but I'm here to tell you it'll be the most liberating thing you do. So if you think she's cheating or, or she's acting inappropriately or, or having uh, some kind of um, inappropriate boyfriend at work or whatever, you just say so. You say, hey, I've been noticing lately that you've been disconnected. I've been noticing lately you're texting all the time and you're not paying attention to us. You know, that, that feels funny. I've been disconnected too. And, and it feels like what we're doing is getting to a place to where we're not, even, we're not even getting affection from each other. I just want to tell you that if you're thinking of having an affair, that would be normal. I've thought about that too. If you're fantasizing about somebody who makes you feel good and soft and gushy and sexual, I want that feeling too. And so I just wanted to say it out loud. I don't need you to do anything for me. I don't need you to be anything for me. I need to uh, make this horse shut up. Stop it. Sorry. There was a horse trying to get in here. I was on a roll there too. I don't need you to be anything for me. I don't need you give me, to give me any answers. I don't need you to explain your texting. I just want you to know that I get it. I understand how this game is played. And the truth is that we both can feel detached and unloved and, and, and not sexy and not attracted to each other. And so if you ever think you want to have an affair or, or, or end this relationship or be with somebody else, all I'm asking is that you just be honest about it. Let's be radically honest. Let's be transparent about it. No games, no hidden feelings. Let's just freaking talk out loud. So I'm telling you how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. I regret we've gotten here, but we're both going to be okay no matter what happens. I'm going to dinner tonight. I'm going to go get some pizza and a beer. If you want to come along, that's great. Otherwise, I'll, I'll be gone until about nine o'clock. You know, and I'm just modeling an, an, an energy. It's a detached, courageous, brave energy of knowing that you're okay. Knowing that you can say everything out loud that you're feeling and not fear the consequences. What is the effect on her when you do that? I don't know. I can predict the effect. It's probably amazement and shock and wonderment. She'll probably say nothing in return. She may say whatever and go off and go, what the hell was that? That was the most brutally honest, courageous, open thing I've ever heard him say in 20 years of marriage. Who is this dude? And why is he going to eat pizza by himself? So you create curiosity and interest. This is where the attraction first started with you guys, when you were unapologetic and goofy and open. This is when, when things started to feel good. I'm asking you to go back into that energy for you, not to save this marriage and not to make her like you again. Do it because you like being this guy. 
this is what I do. This is what I do for men. I help them get that grin on their face and that swagger in their step so they know that they are okay no matter what happens in this, in this moment right now. So that's what I want to share with you today. Uh, thanks for sharing my caffeinated uh, movie minute here. I wanted to get this through and I just wanted you to, to, to feel what I'm feeling for you is that you're okay. You're going to be okay. And you can get through this as long as you stop projecting the responsibility on her to make you feel good about it. This is your job, buddy. Call me if you want to talk. Have a great day. Bye.